Well, I'm here again with David Roberts, author of the book Heal Yourself in Time and inventor of the game of time. He's going to talk to us today about healing. So, Dave, I understand you use a mirror to help others to heal. Uh, I do. In fact, I have a number of ways uh, that I try to use mirrors to help people to see and understand things about the time dimension and reality in themselves. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you'll bear with me here for just a few minutes, folks, I'm going to try to use one of my mirrors on you today to show you a little bit about part of this. Okay. Um, this is one of my mirrors here, and what this actually is, um, when I show it to you, is a model for reality. And this model says that where we are and what we call life is the dimension of time. And the model goes on to say that what time is, is a mirror, or is like a mirror to our experience. And that, that's a truth that most of us identify with, but not a lot of people really understand. So we're going to explore that just a little bit and see if we can gain some understanding of that. Now, the model says that time is a mirror, but it's not an ordinary mirror. Uh, what I would call a simple mirror, like, let's say, like a mirror hanging on the wall. I would call it a simple mirror. Uh, the model says what time is, is a complex mirror. And what I mean by complex mirror is that it's like a folding mirror. And so this is actually a representation that I can show you, that our eyes can see, of what I'm saying the dimension of time is like how time is structured and how reality is structured. So again, time is like a folding mirror. So the time mirror actually has two facets to it. And when I explore it that far into the second dimension, I find that those two facets of the mirror become time and, interestingly enough, space. And so this actually becomes a representation of something that Einstein called the space-time continuum. And uh, I'm going to ask you all the question, what, what exactly would you see if you were to look into an arrangement like this? And I'm, this is probably my most difficult task here, but I'm going to try to show it to the camera. So. What you may see here is a camera, but I'm going to try to show you what we would indeed see if we were to look into this arrangement. And we know that there are two mirror surfaces that we're looking into that I'm calling space and time. And so we can already expect to see two reflections, one reflection in each of those mirror surfaces. And so we would indeed, we would have a me here in this mirror surface. And we would have another me all the way over here in this mirror surface. So here we are. Um, but what we also have, when I bring this into focus, is this very curious third reflection of me that doesn't really seem like it should be there. Uh, two surfaces of mirror, and yet three reflections of myself. And that, my friends, is an illusion. Um, it is an illusion, I suggest, that's happening right in front of your mind, every bit as much as this mirror in the space dimension provides us with an illusion that's happening in front of our eyes. It's just that it's a complex illusion because it's a complex reflection. And I'm going to show you more about this in just a second. I would just like to clarify for those of you that might want to try this at home. When I say bring this into focus, I mean arrange it at exactly 90 degrees so that it would represent a perfect crossing of planes, the crossing of the dimension as we perceive it of space and time. And before again, I'm going to remind us ultimately that where we are looking and where I suggest we are is a dimension called time. And conventional wisdom, if you will, on this world would more view us as being in space, in the space dimension, and calls time a fourth dimension. In this model, time is the dimension here, and space is actually a facet of the time era. So space is actually a dimension of time, and not the other way around. And so that's where we're going to try to look. What I have here, is a smaller version of what I just showed you. It's just another folding mirror of representation of the space-time continuum. And if we can pan over here to this little table, I'm going to try to line this up for you and just show you a few things that we can see when contemplating this arrangement. And so if you can see that, and you can see that, I'm going to use some of my cards here in order to try to help us to see some things. And again, when I align this properly, I believe in that mirror, you can see once again the same thing that I was talking about, three reflections that's seen in the mirror. So if you were standing there, looking in there, 
that's what you would see is three reflections of yourself staring back at you. And what I actually have here to show you is the card that got named Time. And the Time card is structured in exactly this way, that there are three different ways that I am seeing reflections in this mirror, because we're going to remember that this is the space facet of the Time mirror, and that became the time facet of the time mirror. And in there, again, three reflections of self that we see. And so three possible interpretations, three models of reality, three reflections of self, all of which we're going to take a brief look at here. I know time, I'm, this is a paradoxical thing to say, but time is a little bit of a constraint today. So we're going to take a brief tour of what I can show you with this. So I'm going to move this down here so that we can expand on the principles. But we're going to remember that this is why time is being represented in this way because of the three reflections. And so ultimately, when we're here and we're looking into this mirror where I'm calling time, incidentally a mirror that's in front of your mind, I have a space-time gravity experience. And so this becomes the roots of what I experience in what we call life. And believe it or not, actually accounts for everything that I experience in time, and so everything that I experience and what I call life. Now, um, again, this was the space facet of the mirror, so space got aligned here. There was a convention for the cards as they were read from left to right as I defined this one as the space facet of space-time gravity. Now, it turns out there's another way to say space-time gravity and another way to say it in exactly that order so that it aligns perfectly with these concepts. And this is a representation that I'm imagining we will all be able to identify with. I know it as past, present, and future. And once again, believe it or not, that is another way to say exactly the same thing in exactly the same order. So in other words, the dimension of space is synonymous with the dimension of past. And interestingly enough, the experience of gravity is related to our perception of future. And here in the middle, we have ultimately our model for reality that says that everything is time. And here in the middle here, we have the card and a misunderstood dimension, it would seem, in this place, that I call present and some people call now. And as you can see, the present card itself is depicted in imagery here mimicking the time card because there are three pieces coming together to form this experience. And when we take this one step further, 